And joining us now to talk weather for the week ahead on Market Talk, Eric Snodgrass with Nutri. And Eric, great to have you on, sir. Hope you had a great weekend. Yeah, it's, you know, we're plowing towards summer, so it's nice to just uh, string together some warmer days. But it's kind of wet in around the midsection of the country, too. So I think some folks listening didn't have a great weekend, just given how much rain fell in parts of the central U.S. Very true. Saw some of those totals and also looking at this week ahead. And it sounds like it's going to be a fairly active weather pattern across the U.S. here as we get into this first uh, full week of June. What do you see in uh, as far as this week's weather forecast, Eric? Yeah, I'm trying to weigh the benefits of this with some of the drawbacks. And I think the biggest benefit is if, if we if we still have on the table this year the risk of drought development or redevelopment in the central United States, uh, any rain we get in early June buys us time, especially if you've got the soil that can hang on to that moisture. So I look at all of this and say, you know, I think overall this is a net positive. Uh, what, what What's happening is we're still getting the the, the, the results of an extended uh, and long jet. I mean, the beginning of the Pacific jet stream doesn't start in the Pacific. It actually starts in like Egypt, goes over the Himalayas, comes out of China and Japan, goes across the Pacific, goes into Oregon, straight across the U.S. and finishes in Ireland. I'm not joking. The whole thing is one continuous. And I don't, you know, I don't remember a lot of times in my career being able to say that. So we, we are asking, like, when's that going to stop? Like, it can't just stay like that forever. I mean, it didn't even look like this in 2019. So, you know, we're, we're seeing the effect of it now, but it does appear like we're going to shake that off by the time we get to mid-month. So the idea here is the rain we're getting now buys us time, kicks the can down the road on drought risk, but it's still lingering in the background for a lot of reasons. Well, Eric, I know we've seen some severe weather recently, too, across parts of the country, especially across parts of the plains. Are we going to see any severe weather with uh, the outlook here this week? Yeah, we are. There's uh, This morning I'm watching a complex of storms going toward kind of the confluence of the Mississippi and Ohio River, but it's going to return back to the central and western plains uh, later today and then again tomorrow. And I think hail risk is going to continue to be an issue. You know, technically we're below average on our hail reports so far this year. But uh, it doesn't mean that people aren't getting hail. We've had some big time hail. In fact, some hail in the Pacific Northwest over the weekend. Not a place you generally think about having hail damage, but uh, they had a few reports there as well. So, so yeah, the planes are kind of under the gun right now for the risk of these strongest severe storms uh, early this week and will likely uh, continue to be so for a, for a while. Well, you mentioned the jet stream, and we watched this week's uh, fairly active weather pattern, but we've been talking a lot about La Nina, and I mm -hmm. know that is something that we're going to continue to keep our eyes on. I mean, do we see a shift in this La Nina pattern coming anytime soon, Eric? You know, the most of us would agree, you know, most of us meteorologists would agree that the base state of the atmosphere is still behaving like La Nina. What we mean by that is that the trade winds are strong. And usually in mid to late spring, that does give us an extended jet, okay? But at some point you break into a summer pattern. And all the summer, when we say summer pattern, we just mean the jet stream slows down and it moves north. And that seems to be happening despite La Nina hanging around. So what La Nina tends to have an impact on is just where the summer ridge sets up. We haven't had, you know, a, 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 a summer ridge in the midsection of the country for a number of years. It doesn't mean we're due. We just look for factors that could influence that. And maybe by the time we get past mid-June, despite, you know, what La Nina has been doing, it may eventually do what we typically think La Nina's do, which is to place greater risk of heat in the midsection of the country. Now, I watch it every day. And every day, I feel like I come up with a little bit different flavor of that same story. And, uh, but it, the risk is still there. And I think that's the way we need to think about it, is that the risk is there. It's not a slam dunk guarantee, but I see a ridge north of Hawaii. I see another ridge that's going to sit right over the central part of the U.S., another one over Bermuda. That triple ridge pattern, if it stays, really starts to give us worry later. I'm talking July and August, if it's still there uh, on, on, on potentially having some yield potential issues. Uh, but it's all ahead of us. And before we get there, it's like you just talked about, it's going to rain. <laughs> so, so it's, it's, uh, it's kind of just waiting in the wings to potentially be a problem, but we're all kind of sitting in this, let's wait and see how it all shakes out kind of mode. But La Nina is still the driver of this. Well, I know as well, we've seen uh, some reports from farmers, you know, obviously planting has been an issue in parts of the country this year, still having issues in the Northern Plains, getting a crop in, getting dried out in the Red River Valley. But I'm even hearing talk of some farmers saying, 
well, we got it in, but we're having some emergence issues now that we've seen a bunch of rain, whether you be talking parts of the eastern Midwest into parts of, say, Illinois and into Iowa. I've even heard some of those reports. So one has to wonder how the weather makeup here in June could potentially impact some of those emergence issues we're hearing. And I know we'll get a good look at things on this afternoon's crop progress report, too. Yeah, you got to you got to pour some heat into the crop early. Otherwise, it just doesn't jump out of the ground. And we've not been able to do that. I mean, we have uh, growing degree day deficits from Illinois into Iowa, stretching through the western core, about the northern plains. They're off by about 150 GDUs compared to normal. That's a lot. I mean, that, you think of that as like a whole week of heat that they have not received yet. Uh, but it's spread out over a month. And the Northwest is even in worse shape, like the central, or uh, excuse me, the uh, Columbia Basin, a, a massive agriculture productive area sitting 200 GDUs below normal. So the problem though is this, and, and this is the good and the bad of that rain. You bring the rain in and let's say you got that lake crop that's struggling to get out of the ground. If you then bake the top of that soil right afterward, it can't push through the crust. So it's, uh, we deal with this every year. There's There's no surprises in any of this. It's just one of those years right now that we see globally, you know, issues with the balance sheet. So we need to have a big crop here in the U.S. So we're going to just we're going to fine coat, uh, fine tune, fine tooth comb this whole, you know, country trying to see where there's problems and where there's not problems. And I think that that that's going to be an issue until we get this crop out of the ground. Well, you mentioned global balance sheets, and let's turn our attention globally a little bit. Let's talk Europe. We've heard a lot about uh, some issues with heat in parts of Europe and their wheat crops. What are things looking like uh, there as we get into the month of June, Eric? Yeah, so we've had some reports of some pretty substantial heat, like in France and parts of the Iberian Peninsula, which is where Spain is. And we've also seen some drier pockets emerge in parts of Europe, especially as you get over toward like uh, the Black Sea region. Now, some late May rains helped in some of that area. And that happens, right? You, you get good timely rains that really help some folks while they miss others. But we, we look and we just got some brand new long range data this morning for the whole globe from the European model. And if we start in Europe where that model's run, they tend to be drier south, which I'm talking like just Northern Europe, see normal precip, but you get into Southern Europe over toward the Black Sea, there's greater risk of, of, of being a drier summer overall. That'd be what the pattern would suggest. So I, I think there's going to be just, um, you know, folks watching over there for multiple reasons, of course. But, you know, if a crop does get in, for example, in Ukraine, uh, we need to know the size of it. And we need to know if weather's going to pull back on some of the yield potential. And what I'm saying is there is risk on the downside just because of La Nina this year. How about in South America? I've heard some reports of frosts and freezes in parts of Brazil and Argentina. And, you know, some areas are dry when they don't need to be. And it might be a little too late while some other areas need to be a little bit drier, especially for wheat production in, say, Argentina. So what are you seeing in South America right now? Yeah. So remember, we're, we're 14 days away from our summer solstice. They're 14 away from their winter solstice. So, I mean, it's, it's cold. I mean, it gets cold down there. And the crop in southern Brazil, the safrina crop, did get hit with some colder weather as of late. And some of that was during pollination and early grain fill. So we were talking overnight lows that got down into the mid 30s. Um, you know, so, so that was an issue. Uh, you know, of course, the monsoon's done. So we, we've got three months of dryness in northern Brazil anyway. Uh, but as they're harvesting that crop, I think they're starting to see some of the issues of dryness uh back you know back in march and april that took some of the yield potential off of that so by most accounts at least from what i'm hearing from folks um you know maybe it pulled off five to seven million metric ton from what that safrina crop could have been uh but it, it's still big it's just not huge as big as it could have been well eric uh, great analysis as always any final thoughts uh, on the weather front here before we let you go yeah, you know, like I said, with the new long range data that were just released, uh, the model really didn't change much in its trajectory for um, July, August, September in the Midwestern part of the United States. In other words, still showing possible risk of, of drier conditions there. It did back off a little on the heat, but I still think we have a risk this summer that we got to keep an eye on. Well, we will keep informed with what is going on with the weather. We appreciate the time as always. Thank you for joining us. Eric Snodgrass with Nutrien. Have a great week, sir. Yeah, you too. Thanks.